Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. We're jumping in with the PMDG 737 and looking at the all new Axes assignment interface in SPAD.next version 0.9.13.39. Yowzer, that's a big version number. There have been some changes to the streamline the interface, and this reflects the way buttons and switches work. The big feature in all of this is that not only are there additional standard Axe types, but now we can apply conditions. So we're gonna jump into explaining how the axes now work, and we're gonna give an example that people have been looking for for a while, which is how do they apply reversers in an axe range on the Bravo or other controllers instead of using a decrement button. So let's go ahead, jump in, and have a look. So of course, what we're talking about is people wanted a way that when flipping the reverse handles, it didn't just go all the way into reverse mode. And so now, as you can see, when we flip the handles up and then we start to move the axes, we now have full range control over the reverse thrust. And if we take it all the way to the top, well, we can go all the way up to over 100%. And then, of course, we bring it back down, lower the handles, and now we can go into the forward thrust range, which we better slow ourselves down. So what's really cool about all this is that's fully assignable inside of SPAD.next. So let's jump over to the new UI and see how that works. So coming into the user interface, not much is going to change when we go to our Bravo. Here, it looks the same. However, we now have changed in how we get to interact with an Axie. So now if I was to take an Axie that had nothing assigned, I was to go to my Add Event. You no longer see choices between Standard Axie, Custom Axis, and then having that open up a different dialog. Instead, you have the When Axis Value is Changed. So now when we click on this, we're brought into a user interface that looks just like it did with buttons. This means the top half can allow us to apply conditions. So this is something we couldn't do before, which was apply some type of a condition to control what it's supposed to do. That way enabling us to apply multiple events at the same time. So now you also see that when adding the action, you get those similar type events. Whereas before you were limited to what you could pick from, I've got the ability to highlight a standard Axie event. So this is just like before where you take an axis and you'd pick from a set of events that have been pre-coded under the hood to make it easier for you so you don't have to do the other values yourself. You can see that we've got all of the throttles with reverser, including the EX1s. Now this highlights the fact that Microsoft Flight Sim has a few different options that airplane developers can use. And sometimes you need the variable that is the throttle axis, and sometimes you need the throttle axis underscore EX1. What's great is now you have both with reverser, where when we choose one of these types of settings, you'll notice you can dictate where in your axis range the full thrust is, where idle thrust is, and then where full reverse thrust is. And one of the big benefits of what was added previously was now you can set a range. Uh, so having these two sections uh, really enabled things to give you uh, that ability to deal with uh, a noisy axis, which doesn't always get to its full extent. So you're also going to see that you had your throttle without reverser. So those were axis ranges that would never invoke the reverser. Uh, so also very helpful especially with what we're going to do here and the PMDG. We want to control the axis without a reverser when we don't have those reverser handles up. And so this is a big benefit having the option to pick between those. So then in addition to those, you got reverser axis controls as now part of the standard axis events. So this is making life a lot easier for a lot of people. There's many things here that you won't have to go into the custom uh, events for because you've already got a lot of what you're looking for. You've got your propeller pitch, your mixture, your cowl flaps, your brakes, which you set on your rudder pedals, uh, flaps, detents, so auto detent, we've covered this before. You have your elevator trim, your spoilers, your ailerons, your rudder, and your elevator. When we look at custom access events, we've seen these before, this allows you to create range definitions, it allows you to do rescaling of values, and then pick the variable you want to target. 
Now sometimes you're not going to apply any range definition or any rescale value. So range definition is because you might want to build your own detent sections. And again, we have other videos which you should look at on how we've leveraged that to build uh, range detents for things like corporate jets, allowing you to build your range on your physical throttle to map into the range you wanted in the plane. When you use a rescale value, that's because you might have a specific number that it has to target. Uh, and so you're changing what the axis value number would plug into the target value. And so you could also have it that with a range definition, it was setting a specific value. So you get to pick whether it picks from the axis value or it picks from what you've set up as your rescale value. And then sometimes it's going in the wrong direction. And so instead of inverting things, you just hit the invert axis. So this UI hasn't really changed from the previous one. It's just you don't get to it from the add event. You add the event, then you come to the add action, and that's where you find it. You can still change data value directly based on the axis value, send simulation events. So all the functionality is there that previously you would have had to make a workaround, which would have been that you would have had the axis write a custom LVAR value. Mm -hmm. Then you would have used that in a snippet. So this is really powerful in what we now have available to us. What's great is it auto migrated. So when I come to spoilers, you'll see that here we had set that up as a custom axis. And that was because we didn't want to use the standard value because the standard value has an arming mode. And we needed to directly drive the PMDG value. And so here you could see I didn't need a range definition and I didn't need to rescale. But what I needed to do was send the raw value of the axis directly into the axis spoiler set. When we come to the throttles, this is what we would have had in the previous Bravo setup video. You would have seen that a throttle without reverser only then on the handles, we would have had that repeat mode going on. Now, instead, what we've done is we added the action and we said standard axis value throttle without reverser. Only now we went ahead and we added a condition. So we hit add condition. We browsed for a data source and we created a new local variable. And we called that local variable left reverser mode. So it was just new local variable. I typed in left reverser mode. I said it's session because we want it to always default to zero. We chose a number. We said zero will be the default. And then we set it to no decimals. So it's just zero or one is what we're going to set it to. And then we hit the create button. So here we said when it's equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and control that throttle, no reverser. So we said set it to engine one. We moved our throttle into the full throttle position and we hit the set button. Then we moved it to the idle thrust and we hit that set button. These are the default values of 16383 to minus 16383. And then we clicked OK. Now we should set end processing. Now we set a second event. So we added event again, another axis value changed. Only this time we set the condition equal to one. And now also should do end processing. We set the value of the engine reverser and we set zero. And then of course, full reverse thrust would now be moving it forward to 1023. And we can adjust the value here. So some planes, the value of reverse thrust is mac is capped. And so if you wanted to, you could set this value to 4096 and then we'll get past 64%. But again, that's all up to you. Uh, and if you want to cheat or if you want to see what the sim actually uh, maxes out as, and you can change these values to get to that. I know, for example, with the working title 787, uh, you can go beyond what it will allow in the real plane uh, because you can set this value beyond 4096. Click OK. You've got your values and now you have your two parameters. And then you could copy throttle one. So copy all events, come over to throttle two, paste all events, and then you would change from local left mode. You would make a new local variable for right reverse mode. And you Turn off engine one switch and turn on the engine two switch. And you've got your values already there. 
make sure that you've set it to uh, end processing. And we'll do the same for this one so it doesn't have to go through both. Always save. So once you've done that, you've got your two thrall axis. The key now is how do we get it so that it will process the correct one? So of course, right now when we move the throttles, you see that the count is going up on the throttle axis. But if I put these into reverse mode, and now I move it up, you see the counter increasing on the reverser axis. Put them back down, back up onto the positive or the throttle axis. So you see how those things are changing. Well, to do that, we went to the inputs that are the handles. And of course, if I move the handle, I see the light come on. I move the other handle, I see the light come on. That triggers button 10. So when button 10 is switched into the on mode, we chose to add an event. When switched on, we're going to go ahead and change data value. So we pick that left reverser mode. And after picking that left reverser mode, we chose to set it to a value of 1. Then, copy, paste, change trigger type to release, and now we change the value from 1 to a 0. So now what happens is when we release the lever, it's going to set the value back to 0. Now that we've done that, and we head back over to the plane, now you can see that when we lift up those handles and we move through, we can control the amount of reverse thrust. So we can thrust back a bit. We can thrust all the way until we get ourselves up to 90 or even get ourselves into 100 plus. Come back down lower the handles, and now we're back into applying forward thrust. Well, there you have it. That's all that you need to do to set up those new axis in version 0.9.13.39, as well as to do some neat conditional toggles for reversers. As always, if you guys like this, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along with us next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.